Hi, welcome to the Narrowbird Experience. I'm Anna Marie. And I'm Kath. Today we wanted to talk to you about having cats on a narrowboat. We have two cats and they have lived on narrowboats for four years. We wanted to go into more detail about cat litter, vets and sharing your space with your pets. Or because it is the cat's boat. So I think the first thing you need to know is that you no longer own a narrowboat. Your cats own a narrowboat and they let you stay on board. First up, we do need to start with a disclaimer. Our cats are great. We're really lucky with our cats. And unfortunately, not all cats will behave the same as ours do. Some people's cats will go roaming for hours and weeks on end. And ours don't generally go for more than one to two hours. Yep. So. We know how lucky we are with with our cats. And just because it works for our cats doesn't mean that it's going to work for everybody. So we're, we're not going too specific about what we do day to day with our cats. We're just going to concentrate on some of the fundamentals that we think apply to all cats in general yes. on narrowboats. So first up, we wanted to talk about kitty litter. We buy our cat litter in bulk. We generally will shop online at zooplus.com because the cat litter is quite is a lot cheaper with them and we'll have it sent to friends or family and either go and pick it up from them or they'll deliver it to us if they're coming to visit. If we can't get to them then we will buy from pets at home. We can buy a 40 litre bag or a smaller 10 litre bag. A 10 litre bag will typically last us about a month and our cats don't generally do their business outside, unfortunately. <laughs> Not that we can they, see. They, they acti actively <laughs> come back on the boat, go to the toilet, and then go back outside. It, that's their practice. I don't know if it's because they don't feel safe outside or what, but yeah. I know if your cat goes outside, then you'll need less cat litter. Yeah. But you do want to have something if you're going to keep them locked up so that they don't do their business. Not in a cat litter box. Yeah. The cat litter that we've chosen is Cat's Best Cat Litter. We find that it clumps really, really well. It's very forgiving. If you can't clean it out one day, you can actually make it to the next day. And it's also very forgiving in having to be topped up. You can basically start with the whole kitty litter topped up and you can just clean it as you go and you don't really have to top it up for a few weeks so it's it's just such low maintenance it does track a little bit and we've tried floor rugs we've tried top loading kitty litters the only way that we've found that a hundred percent deals with tracking is a vacuum cleaner <laughs> it's really the only thing that works yeah. you have to just vacuum up the tracking but in this case because we have the kitty litter tucked away under a cupboard um they have to kind of jump out through the cupboard and there is a little bit less tracking. Yeah, the top loader cat litter box that we tried initially when we lived on our old boat did have slightly less tracking, I thought. I didn't think so. But the open litter box that we've got at the moment is terrible okay. because they kick it everywhere. And I think the thing is, in the old boat, I was in charge of kitty litter and in the new boat, Cass in charge of kitty litter. So but we didn't have the top loader when we lived on board, so we had it when we were just on there as guests. The idea is that the box is fully enclosed and the cat has to get in and out of a hole at the top, so when they jump up, they're not taking as much with them because they then have to climb across the lid. However... That doesn't always... That no, doesn't work. It didn't but, work because what the cat... Least, but <laughs> would do is they would jump out from the bottom of the kitty litter onto the floor they wouldn't stop at the top but they would not be able to kick the cat litter out because munchie does like to do a vicious <laughs> berry so he will stand and he will do a big he'll open his paw out to get maximum coverage and do a big dig and then the cat litter will fly out of the tray and spread across the floor. <laughs> okay, so so this is the kitty litter that we have found that works the best for us. We recommend it to everybody. We're not affiliated in any way. It's also um, quite good for the environment and it's um, made from natural products, yeah. which is also good for the cats. It will uh, break down naturally. So if we wanted to, we could bury it 
out on the towpath. Which we went out too. But, <laughs> but I, you bought, could. I bought a trowel <laughs> and that's as close as I got. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's natural. It's not like um, silicon or anything like that. And it does absorb the odours. Yeah. Um, because the... Um, not if, the twos. If the cats do their ones in the kitty litter, which they do, it just clumps and it absorbs all the odours. The next kind of important point with having pets of any sort is how easy it is for you to get them to the vet. We've only had to take ours to the vet twice since we've been continual cruising. Once was for the annual injection booster and the other time was because Alice was unwell. Yeah. And we found that fairly easy. We think both the cats are microchipped. So they have our phone numbers if anything was to happen and they ended up in a vet's and we don't know where we are, then we would get notified. Yeah. We have heard of different continual cruisers having problems with changing the microchipping information because you don't have a home address. So our suggestion is to ask a friend or a relative to use their address and use your phone number mm -hmm. and keep the information like that because not everybody understands that we're continual cruisers. When we go to the vets, um, we just, when it's an emergency, as it was with Alice, you can just look up vets in the local area. And we have found that Pets at Home is very reliable because they yeah. open extended hours and they're a main um, chain store of vets. And so we, ha we took Alice to Pets at Home and we had no problem having um, being continual cruisers and just stopping in and seeing them at yeah. all. We did need to get a cab, a taxi cab, to get her to the vet. But when we rang them, we did have to mention that we were going to be taking a cat with us, just in case the taxi company had a rule about pets in their vehicle, or maybe even the driver had an allergy to cat fur. You never know, so it's best to check at the time. Yeah, you don't want to be standing there with your sick pet and then the cab company tell you they can't take you. The other point it's worth mentioning, if you do hire a car thinking you're going to go take your pet to a vet because maybe it needs regular checkups, um, lots of hire companies won't let you have animals in the car. So you want to deal with that however you see best, whether or not it's maybe not sharing the information about where you're, what you're doing with the car, or maybe not hiring a car to take a pet to a vet and catching a cab instead. It's just the little rule that you want to not get caught out on if you're standing at your hire company yeah. with your cat um, in its cat carrier. Yeah. We do have collapsible cat carry cases. We've got two different sorts. One of them is a box carry case that has a little handle so that you can hold it under your arm and the other one is a rucksack that doubles as a wheelie trolley. The cats don't like being wheeled in it. <laughs> no, and they don't, very bumpy. They don't massively love being in the backpack either. <laughs> But, but it's so cute. It's so easy to carry. So if you do have a little walk to get yourself to a road or to, even if you're within walking distance of the vet, then I do recommend the rucksack. Yeah, I highly recommend the rucksack as well. It was something we also got from Zoo Plus. Yeah. We will of course leave links to everything that we use in the description below. They will be Amazon affiliated links so if you do click on them we will get a tiny amount to say that you have clicked on them, full disclosure for that. One other thing about vets is that when they will maintain a medical history on your pet. So when we first lived in an apartment and we got the cats brand new we went to one vets and then we moved to another location so the vets did transfer the their records across yeah. so if you are going to be continual cruising I would recommend you registering with a vet so that they've got your pet's medical history just in case you need it because yeah. then at least if there's anything that does go wrong or they've got a recurring medical condition that any vet that you go to can just ring up this other practice and find out the history yeah If you have a cat on a narrowboat, you know that the narrowboat belongs to the cat. 
and it lets you stay on board. So where does your cat want to sleep is going to be one of the main things. Cats need to feel safe and they, when it's cold they need to be warm and when it's warm they need to be cool. So you need to be thinking about having spaces for your cat that are friendly and safe spaces. One thing that we recommend is making sure that there's a dedicated space for your cat that is just for your cat, like a high up shelf or area that you've put up just for them and they can sit on or they can sleep and keep an eye on you from up high. And it's a place that you don't ever use so they never get kicked off of that space. Even though they're of course going to not sleep in that perfect space and sleep on your bed. Yeah. That's just cats. The other thing is we have installed a scratching post. We've got two scratching posts throughout the boat. Um, we also make sure that we have a couple of floor mats that we don't care, we don't spend a lot of money mm -hmm. on, but we have them around the boat because they love to um, scratch on floor mats and they love to scratch on the scratching post. And I think it's just something that they need to do for their territory and they need to do for their claws and they need to do to be able to stretch their backs. And when you're living in a small space with two cats or one cat, it's really important that they feel like they're able to stretch and run and still be looked after in that way. So we have the scratching posts. The other thing with the rugs is they like to hide their toys under them. Which is cute. Yeah. So, which leads it nicely into making sure you have adequate entertainment for your cats because they might not enjoy cruising for hours or it might not be a safe area to let them out. Yes. In which case they still need to have their exercise and their entertainment. So we recommend having a number of high quality toys and splitting it so that they have half at any one time and then you can swap them around and it's like they get new toys. Yeah. But you're not getting them new toys, they're their old toys. Yeah, so we, we try to rotate the toys every few months and we put the old ones away and the new ones come out. Ready. Ready, Mo. But we also buy, like I've said, high quality toys in particular. Um, there are some other boat tubers called Bears on Board who run a pet shop and they got us onto Stinkies and they cats love them. Mm -hmm. So they only really get a Stinky once every month. Yeah. And it keeps them entertained and we only give them that toy when we know they definitely can't go out because we're near a road or it's been raining for days. Yeah. Um, so we kind of regulate them like that. Recently, we've also bought them a tunnel and it's a fold up tunnel that goes away. But if it's raining or if we know they're going to be home all day by themselves because we're out, we'll put the tunnel out and it just gives them that extra um, thing to be curious about so that they don't get bored. Because unfortunately, even though our cats are lovely, when they get bored, they kind of turn on each other. I'm yeah. sorry to be a dobber. Oi! but they do turn on each other a little bit and they get a little bit cross with each other. You know, they've never hurt each other at all, but they just get very hissy at each other. I'm sorry to have to dob. I'm very embarrassed for them. As an aside, if you have more than one cat and you've perhaps not had them in a house, so they haven't lived together for a, for a long time, say you're introducing a new cat into the environment, the new cat and the old cat will need to have separate areas to socialise because they might not immediately get on very well. And one of the things that people recommend in houses is having one more litter tray than you have cats. So if you have two cats, having three litter trays. <laughs> Obviously that's not super practical on a boat, but if you were to introduce, say, we were to buy and get another cat now, we would have to make sure that we had another cat litter. Ours are litter mates and they've lived together their whole lives so they, they would do share but we have heard stories of even litter mates that won't share a cat yeah. litter and, and it gets and very aggressive. And it comes back down to our cats not being the typical cats for everybody. They will eat out of the same bowl, they will drink out of the same bowl and so that's really lucky for us. It, it lowers the amount of things we need but if they get bored with each other and if if Munchie is anxious and if it's been raining for a week then we do need to feed them separately and we need to kind of be mindful of that kind of thing so you've just got to be a little bit intuitive as well with the pet that you have. 
Thanks for watching today. Hopefully you have found this episode interesting. If you have a cat on your narrowboat, please leave a comment below and tell us what your best tip for having a cat on a narrowboat is. <laughs> yeah, we're doing cats on narrowboats. Let's get this finished. Alternatively, if you're going to be buying a narrowboat yourself and you have a cat that you're looking to rehome onto a narrowboat and you have any concerns, do leave your comments below and if we can't help you, I'm sure that some of the other wonderful commenters will, will give you some top tips. As always, give us a like, hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching. <laughs>